Hold her steady, Artie. Look at her go, Gramps. I'll try to get her down. It was going great. What happened? The tail broke. I know, but why did it crash? Well, the tail is what stabilizes it. It took me hours to make this cut. We'll just make another one. Can't we just buy one? Didn't you have fun making it yourself? Yes, but it took me so long. And it only flew for a couple of minutes. Now, everything about flying is about experimentation, trial and error. <laughs> if you had fun making just one kite, wait till I take you to a place where they make models of all kinds of things that sometimes crash. Come on, I've got a little surprise for you. These are all models of planes through history. What's that one? Uh, that one's an ornithopter. Uh, do you remember what ornith means? It's ancient Greek for bird. Hi, Mr. O'Neill. Uh, uh, hi, Joe. Hey, I'd like you to meet my granddaughter, Artie. Artie, this is Joe. Welcome to the AMA, Artie. What does AMA mean? Academy of Model Aeronautics. And what does that mean? <laughs> well, Joe here's a whiz with model planes, and uh, he's part of the surprise I promised you. He's put together a little video for us that'll answer your question. What do you think, Artie? Who is that man on top of that building, and what is he doing? That's Brother Eilmer, and he's atop the Malmesbury Abbey in England. He lived a very long time ago in the 11th century, and he believed that those wings would help him to fly. Ouch, he must have really hurt himself. He broke both legs. He should have used a parachute. You're right, he should have. But it took another 400 years for the parachute to be created by another inventor called Leonardo da Vinci. I thought he was an artist. He was, and an inventor too. And he was like you, he was fascinated by flight. Da Vinci believed in testing everything before he tried it himself. He was one of the early pioneers of flight. And he designed a flying machine over 600 years ago. He warned anyone who wanted to try flying in real life to do it over water so they wouldn't get hurt. Leonardo learned everything he could about birds, their hollow bones, the structure of their wings, how a bird's feathers move the air. That's why he had birds in his studio to study them. Hundreds of years after da Vinci, another inventor named George Cayley used lightweight wood to imitate bird wings. He also tested his models with a boy who worked on his estate. He had all the luck. I suppose. And luckily, Kaylee was a careful man, too. First, he tested everything with models. That helped him design the first glider to successfully carry a person through air. We call George Kaylee the father of aeronautics. I get it. This surprise is one of your history lessons, Grandpa. <laughs> it's better than my usual, don't you think? Yeah, but I'm surprised by how many people tried to learn how to fly. Another guy tested his ideas for gliders with multiple wings on the Indiana Dunes. You've been there, Artie. Yeah, last year, I slid down the tallest dune. Look at it go. He was from France, but lived in Chicago. He also built and tested this glider with 12 wings. He thought he could get better stability and control from stacked wings. His name was Octave Chanute. He lived over a hundred years ago. Joe, Grandpa told me about a 
yellow plane called the Aerodrome. Do you have anything on that? The Aerodrome A. It had a steam engine that gave the Aerodrome power. It was heavier than air, had a pilot, and it was powered, but... But they hadn't worked out how to control it, and it crashed in the Potomac River. It taught us a lot, though. And the guy who designed it, Samuel Langley, has a NASA center named after him, Langley Flight Research Center. Langley was good, but he didn't know yet just how strong wings needed to be and exactly how the aircraft needed to be balanced. Crashing into the river sounds like something I would do. <laughs> that can happen to anyone brave enough to try new things. I thought you might like to see this, too. What is it? It's the Wright Brothers' Batcopter. Awesome. I even know who they are. They had one when they were kids, and they played with it so much they had to keep fixing it. How does it work? I'll show you. The Wright brothers had been working with kites, with gliders, with everything they could think of, and they just kept crashing. They had a lot of imagination and used really simple materials to make their models fly. And crash. Over and over. Then they came up with the flyer and tossed a coin to see who was going to fly it. Wilbur won, but the motor stalled, and the rudder broke. So Wilbur lost. <laughs> It's hard to believe that even geniuses like the Wright Brothers crashed. But they kept at it. Three days later, the Wright Brothers tried again, and this time they made it with Orville at the controls. In the following years, they had many successful flights and even took passengers on board to fly with them. What was important about the Wright Brothers' first flight was that it was powered, controlled, controlled and in heavier than air aircraft, and it had an operator on board. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. You did a terrific job. Thanks, Joe. That was cool. I learned a lot. I have something for you. A present? A foam plate. A model made from a foam plate, so your grandpa can show you how to control a plane. It's called the FPG-9. That stands for Foam Plate Glider, 9-inch model. Cool. I cannot wait to build my own and try it. The stars look like I could touch them. Did you ever dream of going up there, Gramps? Sometimes, in my imagination. Like that story you read me about an astronaut who blasted off for the moon from Florida. From Earth to the moon. Jules Verne wrote that almost 100 years before the real Apollo astronauts blasted off from Cape Canaveral. This goes to show, sometimes imagination is the first step to making things real. I wish we could visit Cape Canaveral, Gramps. It's called the NASA Kennedy Space Flight Center now. But how about a launch pad a little closer to home? Let's use our imagination. Close your eyes for a second. Look who's here, Artie. You remember my pilot friend, Cappy. Gosh, Artie, you know, I've known you since you were a baby, and I don't even know if you've ever been on a plane. I wish. How about it, Maury? Oh, Grandpa, please, please, please. Well, I thought Cappy might ask, so I talked to your parents before we left. And? And I'll tell you what they said if you can tell me what was important about the Wright Brothers flight. Grandpa, oh, OK. It was powered. Heavier than air. Controlled. And, and it, it had, had an, an operator, operator on board. <laughs> By the way, they said yes. Yes. So what does a plane like that weigh, Cappy? Well, Beechcraft Bonanza weighs about 3,600 pounds when it's fueled up and loaded. Wow, how does it stay up? Well, even though it's heavier than air, it stays up by moving through the air. You know what air is made of, don't you, Artie? Nothing, I guess. <laughs> Here, blow on your hand. You too. What you're feeling is air. 
And even though it's invisible, it's still definitely something. You remember that picture that the astronauts took of the Earth from outer space? Yeah, it was on the cover of our science book. Right. Well, the blue glow around the Earth is the atmosphere. It's the air. It's, it's what makes life possible on Earth. Grandpa says that the air is like water, like an ocean of matter all around us. That's a good way to think of it. Air is a type of matter, and matter takes up space and has mass. The shape of the wing helps lift the plane through the air. And lift is a big force in flying, but the wings can't do it alone. Artie, can you think of what else gets a plane up and keeps it there? The motor? Exactly. The engine and the propellers provide the thrust, the force that moves the plane forward thrust from the motor and lift from the wings. Very good. You're starting to piece it together. Are you ready to fly? You bet. <laughs> ready, First Officer Artemis? Yes, sir. I mean, ma'am. I mean, Captain. <laughs> I feel so big. Oh, it's just a little bit of turbulence, honey. We're moving through the air, and the air is also moving. The plane just acted like a surfer skipping on a wave. Or like a boat going over a wave. Up here, it's the air that has the mass. Instead of the ocean, I get it. <laughs> As the plane speeds up, the air moves faster and faster over and around and under the wings. We're starting our descent. What you felt is the change in the movement of the airplane. We'll be back on the ground in no time at all. Thank you, Cappy. This has been the coolest day ever. You're welcome, Artie. <laughs> Artie here had her first plane ride yesterday. And I'm ready to see some planes like the ones I'm going to fly someday. How about my favorite, the Enterprise? I mean the NASA Space Shuttle Enterprise. That's a plane? Sort of, and a model too. What do you mean, Joe? Well, all of the space shuttles were built to glide back to Earth, just like other planes and gliders tested by Kaylee, Chanute, and the Wright brothers. How is that big thing a model? Just as models are used for safety testing, the Enterprise was never used for an actual space flight. NASA used it to test whether it could return to Earth safely. It glides like my FEG-9. Did NASA learn what they needed to know? Oh yeah, thanks to the Enterprise, the NASA program included five space shuttles, lasted for 30 years and 135 flights. That's why the Enterprise is my favorite. It helped make all of that possible. Does NASA ever fly small-scale models? Oh, you bet they do. They have a special program called the NASA Air Star that has helped make commercial airplanes safer. That's the Air Star program. It looks like a real commercial jet cockpit control, and it flies a six-foot model. How fast does it fly? This six-foot model cruises at about 98 miles per hour. We went faster than that yesterday. <laughs> That's right, almost twice as fast. But can you imagine going so fast that you break the sound barrier? What exactly is the sound barrier? Sound waves travel through the air at about 760 miles per hour. And pilots used to think a plane couldn't travel faster than that without getting slowed down by drag. 
It turns out that some specially designed planes can actually travel faster than sound. So we say they break the sound barrier. What was that boom? The X-1. NASA test pilot Chuck Yeager just broke the sound barrier. Wow, that was awesome. If you want awesome, use to see the wind tunnels NASA is using now to test the Aries. And a plane that could fly to other planets someday. They have a saying at NASA, tunnel test first, flight test later. The wind tunnel testing done by NASA hasn't only helped with speed. The way a wing is shaped makes a huge difference to how air flows over it and even affects safety, like wings icing during very cold weather. Do you see that little winglet there on the tip of the big wing? NASA found out that it cuts down on fuel consumption. This is really cool. It's the spin tunnel. That ever happened to you, Cappy? <laughs> Only on purpose. You went to a spin on purpose? Like this? Well, sort of like that. To go into a spin, you have to stall one or both wings. What NASA helped us to find out was how different kinds of aircraft recover from spins. Tell us more about the Ares program, Cappy. As part of the testing, they're recreating the thin Martian atmosphere. Can you guess why, Artie? Well, I guess the atmosphere on Mars isn't the same as on Earth. Exactly. I didn't think a plane could fly all the way to another planet. It won't. It will be blasted into space by rocket, all folded up in its own aeroshell. When they reach the new planet, the arrow shell will crack open like a giant egg. Looks like it works. Like a charm. <laughs> Imagine flying over Mars, Artie. I wish I could be the one to do it. Do you think they'll find life on other planets, Grandpa? Well, those future missions will be looking for places where there's water underground. And that's where there may be microscopic life. It will also be scoping out places for humans to land one day. I want to be the first astronaut to land on Mars. celebrate with some ice cream. First, I want to show you my plans for the Artemis too. I think I can get better control with one or two adjustments. <sighs> I think you've got a little pilot in the making. Well, we're just helping her spread her wings. Yeah. 